Without any further ado, let's get started on writing some code around our video conversion application. I've taken the liberty of opening up my code editor inside of the convert project right here. Inside of here, you'll notice some familiar files and folders. So we've got the SRC directory, which contains a bunch of code for the React front end of our application. We have our package.json file for listing some dependencies and a webpack config file, which again is used for the React side of our application. As far as general application structure or architecture goes, we're following a pretty similar pattern to what we've done in previous sections. So we're going to create our main Electron application. That will create a main window, which will be a browser window. That browser window, window will load up an index.html document, which is going to import our React application inside of a simple script tag. The React side of the application is being built by a running Webpack dev server, which is something that we're going to run as well. So in practice, it's very similar uh, application stack to the last application we made. We're gonna have the running Electron process and the running Webpack process as well. So let's get to it. We're gonna start off this section by working on creating the base Electron application. So this is gonna be a little bit of more boilerplate that we're now pretty familiar with. We're gonna create an index.js file, require in Electron, and then start up our app. I'll change on over to my code editor. Inside of my root project directory, I'm going to make my new file index.js. And then inside of here, we'll place the boilerplate to create the new Electron application. So we can start off by requiring Electron, and then we'll destructure the app object off of Electron. So const app is coming from Electron. Now, as usual, we will watch the app object right here and wait for the ready event. Once that event is emitted, we can then use that as an opportunity to create a new browser window and load up our HTML document. So we'll say app.onReady. Whenever the ready event occurs, we'll run this arrow function that we pass as the second argument. Inside of here, before we take care of the event handler right here, we'll remember to import the browser window helper, or I should say the browser window class from the Electron library. And then inside of the event handler right here, we can create our new browser window. Now in a previous section, or in the last application we worked on, recall that we subclassed the browser window because we had a lot of associated functionality going on with the browser window object. This time around, I think that kind of at the outset, or at least right now, I think that there's not gonna be a lot of events that we're gonna to have to watch the browser window for. I don't think that there's gonna be a tremendous amount of code that we're going to want to write around the browser window. And so I don't think that maybe, maybe we'll hold off on subclassing this thing for now. And maybe at some point in the future, we'll come back and kind of figure out whether or not we need to subclass it. So for right now, we will make direct access or direct use of the browser window inside of our index.js file. So we'll create a new browser window. Recall that whenever we create a new browser window, we pass in some number of options inside of an options object. Now this time around, I don't think that there's a tremendous number of options that we're going to have to pass in. I think that maybe a good place to start is going to be to set the height and width of this browser window to just kind of fix them in height and width. So let's give this thing a height of 600 and a width of 800. Now the other option that I know for sure that we're going to want to pass in here is that option that's going to allow background processing. So we're going to disable background throttling. If you recall the last application we worked on when we were working with the status bar or the trade task timer up here, we found that whenever the window was not focused, the application would get throttled. And when the application was throttled, essentially you can imagine that all JavaScript code is not going to be executed inside of that application. Now thinking about our application here, where we want to do some video processing and receive events that are coming from some worker process on our machine, yeah, chances are we definitely want to allow our application to run at full speed, even if it's in the background. So I think that a very good kind of forward looking option that we'll put in here right now is to make sure that we disable background throttling. To disable background throttling, recall that we pass in web preferences 
and then set that to be an object with the key of background throttling of false, like so. Okay, so this looks like a good start. Rather than let this section go on too long, let's take a break right now. When we come back in the next section, we'll make sure that we load up our index.html file into the browser window that we created, and then we'll test this thing out and make sure that we can at least get the React side of our application running and open inside of a browser window. So I'll see you in just a second.